This is Mission Spotlight reporting from the central Philippine Islands. Headquarter offices of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the Negros Mission are located in the city of Bacolod. The president of the Negros Mission, H.V. Gayeras, says that this island of three and a half million people has the highest ratio of Seventh-day Adventists of all the central Philippines. Every township has one or more churches, a total of 325 on the island. In Bacolod, a city of 850,000, there are 15. Seventh-day Adventists are the largest Protestant denomination throughout the Philippines. Next to the mission offices, 580 children attend a school on the elementary and secondary levels. The Negros Mission has five academies with a combined enrollment of nearly 2,000 students. The Bacolod Sanitarium and Hospital, a 125-bed healthcare facility, is one of the nine Seventh-day Adventist hospitals and clinics in the Philippines. Gaieras points toward the location of the new college under development for the rapidly growing membership in the central Philippines. Listen as the Skylark Choral Group sing their national anthem to welcome you to the Central Philippine Adventist College. <laughs> In 1979, the church purchased 175 acres of land along the western coast of Negros Island and a part of the 13th Sabbath offering during the second quarter of 1981 helped provide funds to start the college. During the three years since its opening, this one building has housed classrooms, cafeteria, two dormitories, staff homes, chapel, administrative and business offices, a clinic and a store. Agriculture is one of the predominant courses of study. Vivian McCardo, director of the agriculture department, says students in the islands have a real desire to learn the best methods and the scientific principles behind better food production. As new procedures are taught, modern equipment is being provided for their training. And the first major construction to follow the original multi-purpose building is the agriculture section of the proposed administrative complex. Most of the students must work to help meet their school expenses. They harvest sugar cane manually. They thrash the rice crop with a small thrashing machine. rotate the grains by hand during the drying process. The chaff is loosened in reed baskets and then winnowed in the wind. All the different processes without modern equipment are crude and time consuming. Using metal secured to a weighty log, these boys are crushing the toasted rice kernels which gradually become a tasty cereal delicacy. Coconuts grow bountifully and are a source of cooking oil as well as a basic substance in many dishes. But again, the meat is grated from the shell by a hand process. Meal preparation for a student body when everything begins in the garden is a major job. Unique to this college is the Ten Commandment Park located in the heart of the campus a canal which brings irrigation water to the school farm and gardens flows beneath the two tables set in stone. It is here 
students and staff gather for their school family baptism. Sister Emily, tungod sa imo dako nga pahigugma kay Kristo Hesus, gindawat nimo siya bilang imo personal nga manluluwas, bilang ministro sang mayang balita ako magabautismo sa imo sa ngalan sang amay, sang anak ug sang Espiritu Santo. Amen. There seems to be an inner devotion, a power that bids these youth to witness for their faith. Early each Sabbath, eight or nine groups gather for prayer. Then they leave their campus in every available conveyance, and some walk to their destinations. They travel as far as nine or ten miles over rough, rugged roads through the jungle. They hold Sabbath services in the surrounding barrios, and in the afternoons, they visit, pray, and study with the people. Since the college opened in 1982, students have entered nine new areas and established church groups with as many as 35 to 40 people worshiping each Sabbath. During vacation periods, the Skylarks tour their island. They visit homes during the day and churches in the evening. Prominent people, mayors, consuls, and businessmen welcome them. The pre-nursing students hold a weekly clinic in the nearby barrio as a part of their training. A medical doctor or trained staff member assists. This community service helps create goodwill toward the college and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Dr. Iris Binkang, a guest physician for this particular clinic day, says the people are very receptive to such a program from the college. Because this is free clinic, we have more than the usual number of patients. So before the day is over, I'll probably have seen 125 patients. The Far Eastern Division has definite plans to challenge the young people at this college who are enrolled in the rural health program. A two-year pilot program will test the concept of sending students two by two into the barrios to teach agriculture, child care, sanitation, nutrition, and cooking. This approach, it is believed, will open opportunities for Bible studies and evangelistic meetings. This quarter, Sabbath school members will again have a part in building this new college. The dormitory for the girls is the selected project. As quickly as dormitories can be built and degrees can be added in more areas, enrollment is projected to soar to 700 and continue to grow. The fastest church growth in the Philippines is now in the Central Islands, and 60% of this membership is youth. Rose, Grace, Kathleen, Sharon, Ruby, Anne, Marjorie, Dolores. All of the girls at the Central Philippine Adventist College are looking to the future of their college, to a time when they will have their dormitories, their classrooms, library, cafeteria, and other essential buildings. School family at the Central Philippine Adventist College, thank you. This is Mission Spotlight. Good night and to